Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here uh, with the Piney Podcast. Um, here's the deal. Uh, for the fourth day in a row, we have had less than 3,000 new cases in the state of New Jersey. Now, the coverage on this, again, has been skewed towards, oh my God, more deaths. Everybody run. Ah! But hospitalization is down. New cases as below 3,000 every day, and they're doing more testing. So that's a, that's a great sign that this is being mitigated, okay? Um, the fact that, unfortunately, more people are dying is really about two weeks ago, all right? Two weeks ago, things were bad. Uh, we were in the middle of this, so... Uh, this is the, yeah, so this would be mid April. We, we, we were, we were a month from when we closed things down and we were still kind of at the peak. That's about where the peak was. So the people who unfortunately are passing now are the people who got infected probably around that time. So don't get too crazy with the way the media is portraying this. There is also this fight in the media and it's all about protest and the lockdown. And the media has taken this side or this narrative or whatever you want to call it, probably because they sell more, well, I shouldn't say they sp sell more newspapers. They get more clicks if you're afraid, right? So they know that after this crisis has died down to nothing, no one's going to keep, you know, I've been tuning in to, for instance, NewJersey.com every day for weeks because I'm following the numbers in New Jersey. I'm following new cases. When we get to July and August, I probably won't even be talking about this. So I'm not going to go to the damn site. And they know that. They know that. And they're trying to extend that as long as possible. And... You could argue that, well, they're not trying to make people afraid. Well, really, they are. Uh, they may rationalize it like, well, we're just reporting the facts. We're just reporting the deaths now because they're going up and we're burying four paragraphs later. Oh, by the way, this has been the fourth day in a row with cases under 3,000. That's what they basically are doing. They're burying the lead. The lead is things are getting better, not worse. Um, overall. Now, that doesn't mean people aren't having problems, and uh, certainly there have been a ton of deaths. But here's another news story, Project Veritas. If you haven't seen their videos, they're pretty good. They're, they're, they do investigative reporting. So this time, they decided to look at some of the funeral homes in and around New York and talk to some of the funeral home directors. And what they're getting from them is the virus is being attributed to people who have died regardless of what they died from. Uh, now, a lot of these people are elderly and probably would have passed anyway um, or just simply died. So, for instance, one of the examples was a woman with Alzheimer's. And apparently when you're far, far gone with uh, that disease, you actually forget to swallow. I know, I was shocked to hear that. But anyhow, uh, part of the treatment there is of, to drain uh, the saliva so the person doesn't drown or, you know, gets them to swallow, basically. Um, this woman apparently died because they forgot to do that or didn't do it enough or, you know, maybe she was just so old she died. But they ended up, because her family was connected, having an autopsy done because her sister knew she did not die of the virus and it turned out she had, but they had put her down as dying from the virus. And this has gone on and the funeral directors, it's not a cabal, but what it is is they're too lazy to do anything else. They don't have time to go investigate uh, all these deaths. When they find a body in an apartment somewhere, they said the normal procedure is to send someone there and do a you know, quick investigation and sort of surmise what they died from. Now, everybody who's dying in this time period is just putting, they're just putting it down to the virus. And part of that 
part of the reason the government is encouraging that, and apparently de Blasio is greatly encouraging it, or his office is, um, is because they want as many cases as possible so they can ask, ask for federal funding. Uh, because apparently the more cases you have, the more Fed money they're going to give you to offset, I don't know, whatever. So, <laughs> um, you could see why uh, everybody has now a vested interest in extending this a little longer or maybe a lot longer than it is. And uh, so there's political reasons, there's money reasons, and uh, this is what happens in a system this big and corrupt. And we do have a big and corrupt system, um, mostly because it's centralized. In the case of New York, New York is too big. It's several boroughs, right? You really, those boroughs are big enough to be cities on their own, but instead they centralize it in New York and uh, de Blasio, rather than being uh, one of five guys who have to deal with this stuff, he is the guy, essentially. So uh, my response would be to think about politically splitting up the boroughs into their own separate townships so they could be managed more efficiently um, because it would be easier to manage a borough of New York rather than all of New York. But uh, that's neither here nor, nor there. We're talking about the beer virus. We're talking about the beer virus and uh, how it's impacting New Jersey. Well, if they're doing this in New York, Chances are they're doing it in New Jersey. Chances are they're doing it in North Jersey. Probably not at the scale of a de Blasio. But, you know, I mean, I do like the governor, Phil Murphy. I, I, I'm not a supporter of his. I didn't, I don't support a lot of his economic policies. I don't agree with everything he does. But at the very least, he seems to come off as a nice guy. I mean, he shows up, he doesn't show up to the... Uh, briefings in his best suit he shows up in kind of a suit that looks like he's been working as opposed to say Cuomo who looks like he spent an hour in makeup before he goes on national television Phil looks like he was doing seven different things and then showed up to give his speech and then went back to whatever it is he was doing um, he you know he just visited Trump today they seem to be getting along which is a positive thing I you know Cuomo they're kind of trying to tout as some sort of rival to Trump or a guy who can maybe come in and run for president and save the Democratic Party. Uh, I, I think that's stupid. I don't think really Cuomo's entertaining that, but uh, I think it just makes everybody look bad to insert that sort of tribalistic nonsense and politics into the middle of this crisis. But it's happening. And uh, so you have to be very wary of these people who want to keep everything locked down. Now, that's not to say there isn't a danger. That's not to say that the virus isn't real. It is. However, as the evidence is, is unrolling, what we're seeing is that more and more people have asymptomatic variants uh, and uh, they got sick and got better and, uh, and, and they're done. And uh, it, again, some evidence suggests 10 times, 50 times, 80 times more people already had this virus. And uh, the most recent uh, wrinkle in this are these doctors out of, I think, Bakersfield, California. They did a YouTube video basically saying that the hospitals aren't overrun and, uh, you know, we really need to open things back up and get back to the kind of uh, work that hospitals normally do because there are people who need operations, therapy, or whatever, and they're being held up because everything's being you know, kept in case you get overrun by virus patients. Now, I, like most people, we, I think we all supported some of these measures for the first few weeks or, or, or the first month probably because there, there seemed to be a danger that we could be overwhelmed in the hospitals. And fortunately, that didn't happen. So bravo, we mitigated it, brought down the curve. But the thing is, the curve has been brought down. And now evidence suggests, and these doctors from Bakersfield also confirm it, that the herd immunity theory may have been a better way to go. 
Uh, now that wouldn't have been just, you know, hey everybody, go lick a doorknob to get sick, but it would have been a thing where we would have kept most things open and said, well, you gotta mitigate, everybody wear a mask, everybody social distance, whatever, as best you can. And, and understand you're probably gonna get sick in the moment you do, you know, let's, let's get you tested, let's, you know, keep the respirators. In fact, with all the respirators and, you know, hospital beds we had extra, it probably would have been better just to build all that and then say, okay, don't close anything, looking back on it. But that's Monday morning quarterbacking. And I'm not here to lambaste the politicians who close for a month. That's fine. But now we have the situation where Gavin Newsom over in California has shut the beaches. Uh, now, I mean, shutting the beaches is just stupid. It's sunny, it's warm in California, so the transmission rates are way down uh, in terms of the virus. So there's really no reason to shut the beaches and close everything up. But this is what happens with petty bureaucrats, and this is what happens uh, when it's centralized in a gigantic, huge economy like California, and only one guy gets to say, close down the beaches. So um, I'll get into the politics more in another video. I don't, I don't want to get too far afield of New Jersey. I think we're doing okay in New Jersey. I think Phil is a little slow to open the stuff up. I really think he should just step on the gas and open everything up and just tell everybody to mitigate. I think he should maybe put more resources towards the old folks' homes and uh, people who are, you know, maybe maybe throw some money to the hospitals to create uh, wings for the virus patients to keep them better quarantined. But beyond that, um, I, I don't see the point in, in holding back the economy and doing more damage that's going to be long term. I really don't see it. Um, things are starting to pick up again anyway, and people are trying to get around this. Just open it up, Phil. I mean, you're not going to stop people from living their lives. You are not, in a few months, going to stop people from going to events, going to concerts. They'll just have to wear masks, or they'll just have to be careful, or they'll, you know, eventually we're going to have a test to know that you already had the virus and you have the antibodies for the virus, so you're relatively safe. Now, if you don't have it, then you might have to get some. And what they used to do is, you know, before vaccines were invented, they used to have to actually inject you with um, the dead version of the virus. And that would activate your immune system to fight that and that would give you some immunity. I'm not exactly sure how it works. I'm not a doctor, I just read stuff. So that may be the ultimate solution, or you may get some of the antibodies from someone who's already recovered injected into to you. They'll 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 grow them, they'll they'll just, you know, get a collect a bunch of them, and then they'll inject you uh, with some variant of that. We're not at that point yet, but we should be uh, approaching that sometime in the summer. So we really need to get this stuff opened up and ready to go. Um, we have all the medical equipment to care for people. If there's a second wave, there will be. Uh, but at this point, the, as uh, I hate to say it, as Trump predicted, the cure is going to be worse than the disease if we don't open up. So, uh, I say open things. Uh, I say get ready for things to open. And uh, uh, hopefully, you know, I don't know if you're collecting unemployment or whatever you're doing, uh, but um, I think it's a time to start to get ready to get the hell outside <laughs> and, and get out there and, and, and do stuff again. You know, mitigate, wear the mask and, and watch yourself, but uh, get ready. New Jersey's got to open back up and we got to open it soon, Phil, sooner rather than later.